The Silicon Valley bank crash that set off the U.S. banking crisis has affected the gold mining business and the financial markets. The demand for protective assets, such as gold and gold-related stocks, is rising due to the Federal Reserve lending to financial institutions. Don't forget to subscribe to Wealth Dynamics to keep yourself updated with the latest happening and insights of the finance world. The global financial system is an intricate network of affiliated institutions, markets, and laws susceptible to internal and external influences. One such factor that has recently significantly impacted the financial markets and other industries, including the gold mining industry, is the U.S. banking crisis. Due to consumer mistrust of local banks brought on by the banking crisis that was started by Silicon Valley Bank's failure, money began to move to major financial institutions. The U.S. Federal Reserve System ended its quantitative tightening program by financing financial institutions to prevent bankruptcy and reassure the public. The regulator must balance preventing rising inflation and not worsening financial organizations' issues. In such situations, there is an increasing demand for protective assets like gold and stocks with a gold theme. The U.S. Federal Reserve System is the country's central bank, usually called the Federal. Its primary duty is to oversee the nation's monetary policy, which involves establishing interest rates, monitoring financial institutions, and guaranteeing the financial system's stability. The Fed has undertaken several policies in recent years to keep the financial system stable. The quantitative tightening program was one of these strategies. It attempted to shrink the Fed's balance sheet by selling some of the assets it had collected during the 2008 financial crisis. But in reaction to the COVID-19 pandemic's adverse economic effects, the Fed has changed its mind and has started financing financial institutions once more. Due to this, the Fed's balance sheet increased from 8.3 trillion US dollars at the end of February to 8.78 trillion US dollars on March 24. The unstable status of the banking sector is evident in the Fed's decision to begin lending to financial institutions. Banks are dealing with an upsurge in defaults and bankruptcies as the epidemic destabilizes the world economy. The Fed wants to avoid a full-blown banking crisis that may endanger the stability of the whole financial system by financing these institutions. The Fed's measures, nevertheless, also prompt worries about inflation. When the central bank injects cash into the economy, the money available for use may rise, resulting in higher prices for goods and services. Higher inflation can worsen the economic issues that firms and consumers suffered due to the pandemic. The Fed is consequently in a challenging situation. On the one hand, it must stop a banking crisis that may have disastrous repercussions. On the other hand, it must be cautious to avoid worsening the economic crisis or inciting inflationary pressures that can endanger customers and businesses. The future is unpredictable, making it challenging to foresee what new advancements might occur. While some experts anticipate further escalation of the banking crisis, others warn of the possibility of growing inflation. It is unclear how the Fed will balance these conflicting demands and guarantee the financial system's stability in the upcoming months and years. In such situations, there is an increasing demand for protective assets, and individuals are turning to bonds, gold, and cryptocurrencies assets that had never before been considered safe haven investments. One way to invest in metal is by purchasing stock in firms that mine or sell gold. Let's examine two key players in the sector, Wheaton Precious Metals Corporation and Franco Nevada Corporation. According to their financial performance, shown below, they have a better position than their rivals. Canadian business Franco Nevada Corporation was established in 1983 and invested in the mining sector. It specializes in purchasing ownership interests in mining gold, silver, platinum, and other metals. By participating in multiple projects at once, this business model makes it possible to lower the risks connected with autonomous metal production and increase revenue. The company's revenue structure shows that 80% of its profits come from selling gold. At the time of writing, Franco Nevada Corporation had the most significant capitalization in the industry at $37.71 billion US dollars. Keep in mind that while the segment's average quick ratio is 7.78, Franco Nevada Corporation's quick ratio is 
having no debt burden contributes to the high quick ratio in part. At the time of writing, Franco Nevada Corporation's profit margin of 53% ranked second highest in this region. Due to the business's profitability, the corporation may devote a portion of its earnings to dividend payments, which in March 2023 totaled 34 cents per share. From March 8 to March 27, inclusive, the corporation's price increased by 11.06% to $143.88 per unit. Wheaton Precious Metals Corp. is a Canadian business specializing in investments in the mineral extraction sector. It was established in 2004 and, up until 2017, went under Silver Wheaton Corporation. Its main office is in Vancouver, Canada. The basis of Wheaton Precious Metals Corporation's business strategy is gaining the right to buy a portion of the gold and minerals generated by mining firms at a fixed price. With several top mining firms, including Barrick Gold Corporation, Vale S.A. and Newmont Corporation, the corporation now has agreements in place. The quick ratio of Wheaton Precious Metals Corp. is 23.1, much higher than the industry average of 7.78 and the company's capitalization of $21.25 billion. US dollars. The company uses no borrowed money to fund its operations, all funding comes from internal resources. The profit margin was 62%, which was a record for the sector at the time of writing. 60% of the company's revenue comes from selling gold, while 32% comes from selling silver. Its share price increased by 21.27% to $46.98 per unit from March 8 to March 27 inclusive. On March 22, 2023, the U.S. Federal Reserve System agreed to increase the interest rate by 0.25% to 5%. This demonstrates the regulator's intention to manage inflation. Additionally, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen stated that there were no plans to implement insurance for all deposits, regardless of size. Given this knowledge, we can infer a continuing high likelihood of further financial upheaval. This will likely benefit the market for protective assets, such as gold and stocks with the gold theme. Companies like Franco Nevada Corporation and Wheaton Precious Metals Corporation have proven to be in a stronger position than their rivals as investors look for safe haven assets. Due to their excellent cash position and capacity to fulfill their immediate obligations, both companies have high quick ratios. They also have low debt to equity ratios, which show that their assets and obligations are balanced. Due to their strong profit margins and favorable financial indicators, they are more resistant to future gold price changes and rivalry. Additionally, by participating in numerous projects at once, these businesses' business models, which entail investing in the creation of gold rather than independent metal production, further lower their risks and boost their profitability. This diversification technique has benefits, particularly during uncertain economic times. The recent U.S. Federal Reserve System decision to boost interest rates may impact the gold mining sector. The demand for gold may decline due to a rise in interest rates as it becomes more expensive for investors using other currencies due to a stronger U.S. currency. However, other factors such as geopolitical concerns, inflation, and market volatility, frequently pushing investors towards gold as a safe haven asset, can reduce the impact of interest rate hikes on the gold market. In conclusion, investors looking to diversify their portfolios find defensive assets like gold and gold mining firms more appealing due to the rise in demand for them brought on by the U.S. banking crisis. Companies like Franco Nevada Corporation and Wheaton Precious Metals Corporation are remarkably resilient to future changes in the gold market due to their financial stability and business operations. In addition to interest rate increases, other factors frequently boost demand for gold as a safe haven asset, creating possibilities for investors in the gold mining sector. That is all for this video. We will be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time.